In the previous section, I mentioned that there are two different variants of set state. Set state can accept a new state object and triggers a re-render as we saw in the previous section. We also used another variant of set state back in our shows app that accepts a callback function which returns new state. In this section, we are going to discuss about how to use set state correctly and why two variants of set state exist. Before we try to understand set state, let's try a quick exercise. Let's add two locks inside our handle like button click callback method, printing likes count, one before calling set state and one after calling set state. Okay, I'm going to comment out this lock for a while and I'm going to add the lock before set state and printing our likes count value before calling our method set state. And I'm going to write an another log after calling my set state method. So it should be after here. Okay. And let's add a log inside our render method also, printing likes count value. So inside our render method, I'm going to paste this log and I'm going to change the text to inside render method. Okay. So far, we know that set state takes the new state and sets our new state in the component instance. And as JavaScript abides by run to completion principle, which means set state must have been finished its execution before returning from handle like button click callback method. And then finally component gets re-rendered again, right? Okay, now I want you to predict the output of these logs, which we have added just now, as soon as I click on like button on the UI, knowing that our likes count is zero at start. I'm saving it and heading over to the browser. We can see our render method log correctly displaying zero for the initial render of our pet component. Okay, I'm going to clean up the console and click on like button. And we got our results. Before set state, our likes count value is zero. After set state, it's zero. And inside render method, it's one. Is that the output you expected? Okay, let me go through the details. Before set state and inside render method logs are expected. Because before I update its value, it's zero, which is showing here. And after I call set state, it updates my state object and triggers a re-render with the updated state object. So we got an output of one here as our inside render method log. Also, we have the correct value displayed on the UI. But our point of interest here is this after set state log, which is still showing old value zero, even though I called it after my set state method. Why is that? Let's try to understand what happened here. The reason why our state didn't get updated immediately after calling set state is set state method call may be asynchronous. Asynchronous just means that whatever we are trying to do, that thing doesn't happen at the same time, but gets executed at a later point of time. This means that even though we are trying to update state with set state, state gets updated asynchronously at some time later. And even though it looks like set state will update our current state immediately, but in reality, it doesn't work like that under the hood. State updates done through set state are asynchronous. And behind the scenes, what set state does is, it takes new state object and enqueues that update inside a queue and just returns. At a later point of time, React takes those state objects from queue and updates state. And then finally triggers re-render of our component. And this is the reason why we are not seeing the updated state data immediately displayed on the console. All right, you might have been wondering, do I need to know all of this? I just got my current result displayed on the web page, right? Hmm. But I would say you still need to understand how set state works because if you don't, you will end up introducing nasty bugs in your application. All right, let's try to understand why React makes state updates asynchronous. Let me pull up a diagram on screen to explain this in more detail. Okay, let's try to understand this with an example. We have a sample application here that is composed of several components. What we are looking at right now is a component tree for the sample application. C1 is a root component that is composed of C2, C3 and C4 components. And C2 component is composed of C5 and C6 components. And finally, C5 component is composed of C7 component. Blue color components are class components here and have state associated with them. Class components that have state are also called as stateful components. And green color components here are functional components that don't have any state associated with them. Okay, assume that user clicked on button in C2 component and that triggered set state for component C2. You can imagine how much work React has to do when set state is triggered. When set state is triggered, React needs to trigger render of component C2. When component C2 gets re-rendered, all of its children also gets re-rendered. This means C5, C6 and C7 components also get re-rendered in a normal flow. 
Finally, React is going to figure out what is actually changed in our React elementary and makes corresponding changes to the DOM efficiently. And then DOM renders the web page. So clearly, set state is making couple of things to happen here. Okay, let's look at another slide. Suppose C2 component here has sent a network request or Ajax request and response has arrived and that triggered set state. And around the same time, in some fraction of milliseconds, C2 set timeout event has also occurred and that again triggered set state. Also at the same time, set state has been triggered inside C4 component because of some user interaction like click. Now we have three set state calls that got triggered at almost the same point of time. Okay, now I can explain the reason behind why set state is asynchronous. It's because React may batch these multiple set state calls inside our application into a single update for performance reasons. As such, there can be many set state calls for same C2 component or different C4 component that can be triggered independently inside our component in a very short time. Executing all of them individually costs some performance hindrance to the application. React attempts to group them and process them all at once in a batch so that our UI doesn't need to be rendered for obsolete set state calls. So the important point here is, even though we have called set state multiple times in that fraction of time, React only makes changes to the DOM only once. You can imagine how much work React and browser would have to do if all set state calls were processed individually and browser had to re-render web page three times in such a short span of time. Okay, let's try to make some sense of what we just discussed with a real world analogy. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever ordered pizza online? When you order it online, they usually ask us to wait for around 30 to 40 minutes. It hardly takes 5 minutes for them to get the order ready. And usually, pizza shop is within 1 mile radius. So you can say, it should take max 10 minutes to deliver. But they have a window of around 10 to 20 minutes. And in that window, they expect to take several orders for the same apartment building or maybe for nearby buildings. They group them and delivers all the orders at a time, rather than delivering each order. Why? Because it would be too inefficient and waste of resources for them if they deliver separately for each order. So instead of that, they queue up several orders together for some window interval and deliver them at once. Window interval is fixed because they shouldn't let the customer wait too long enough. So pizza people are batching all the orders and delivering them within the window. Let's apply the same analogy to React also. When we call set state, it triggers a re-render. And every time re-render happens, usually something is changed on the web page. And just like here, within a fraction of some milliseconds, multiple calls to set state can be triggered in the same component or different components. And UI can get rendered so fast that we couldn't even see those interim changes on the web page. Because web page got rendered too quickly before ultimately applying the final change. So there is no point in showing something we couldn't even notice. And obviously it's a waste of CPU resource. Also, if something gets updated on the web page with more than the speed with which our human eye can detect, user won't be able to see those updates. So just like a pizza delivery guy who keeps a window of 10 to 20 minutes and he will take and deliver several orders within that window time, React also has a window time of at least some milliseconds before rendering it on the web page. So within that window, React takes up all the set state calls and put them together in a queue. And at a later point of time, when it thinks it's the right time, React updates all the states and re-render all the components that call set state in a single shot. So in our example here, Instead of rendering it three times, React will render it only once on the web page. If React spends too much CPU time, then UI becomes unresponsive because JavaScript is single threaded. I hope things are clear now. Alright, now you might be thinking, okay, I understood why React is doing this batched updates optimization, but why do I even have to understand it or worry about it? The answer is because if you don't understand how you should use set state, then someday you will start getting weird bugs in your application. Let's see how it is in the next section.